let's look at setting up a TFTP server on a Linux machine or using Linux machines. So first of all, we need to have a server. So I have a server right here. And the first thing you need to do is install the TFTP server package. So you can do a yum install TFTP server. This will install the TFTP server on Linux. It is part of the XINET D packages. Um, so you install it and then you need to go in and configure it. So you go to etc xinet d dot d directory and you'll see that there is a tftp file right here. So you need to edit the tftp file and there's this disable option you need to change to no. It's not disabled, you want it to actually be running. So exit out. Once that has been enabled by not disabling it, you can go ahead and start the service. So system CTL start TFTP. Now if you want it to start automatically boot time, you would also use the enable option. So system CTL enable TFTP. TFTP servers use UDP port 69 in order to run, so we are going to add a rule that will allow the TFTP server to get through. So if you wanted to figure out which rules are available currently, you can use a firewall cmd-get services and then pipe that to uh, TFTP, rep TFTP. And you can see, well, I list them all right here. And you can see that the TFTP ones are listed in red. So I have TFTP and TFTP client, and I want TFTP. So I do a firewall CMD add service equals TFTP. And I also want this to be permanent. Permanent so that it's both the active configuration and the permanent configuration files the next time I start up, it will be there. Now the TFP server puts files in a directory. So over in var, var, var spool TFP root noob. Let's take a look at it. So we cat out the etc xinet d TFTP directory, we can see that it stores in var lib, var lib TFTP boot. So if I go to var lib TFTP boot, you can take a look and see it's empty. These are where the files are uploaded and downloaded from. If I do ls minus capital Z, you can see, not az, you can see the context, TF, uh, the SE Linux context type is TFTP dir. Uh, underscore rw underscore t so it allows it to both read and write to this directory if i want to create a file i can create one so i'll do echo test file dot txt and let's put what you put in the word hello into that test file dot txt and you can see that it also gets a rw tag all right so now I have the TFP server up and running, it's time to go to a client machine and download that file. So I got a client machine, I go ahead and log in. All right, now the client machine. And I want to install the TFTP client. So I do yum install TFTP, and that is the TFTP client. Normally, TFTP servers are used for communicating with routers and switches. Cisco's pretty uh, much into using TFTP. And with this, I should be able to connect over to the server and get some data. So I do TFTP, and I want to connect to the server. So I'll do a server.example.com and we'll see if that works. And then you can see you have, well, a bunch of commands. 
press question mark and see what happens. You can see the list of commands. And there's a get command. So I'm going to use the get command because I want to get the, what was it, uh, testfile.txt. It's testfile.txt. So I'll do get testfile.txt. And it looks like maybe there's a firewall issue for me on the client side. So I'll just control break and do a firewall cmd add service equals tftp client. With that was it. And permanent. Permanent. Now I'll try doing this same thing again. Do a get uh, test file.txt. And it looks like it went through this time. And so do a quit. And take a look at my directory, and I can see that there's a test file.txt right here. So I cut out the contents of this test file to make sure it has the hello in it, and it does. So this is how you can do a TFP server. Note that TFP servers do not have passwords or those directories or other things like that. They're very simple, very uh, insecure, but they work great for Cisco routers and switches. And that's how you can set it up.